Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with an update to the official Bowtie Index, ticker BOWT, and a real estate stock that not only produced an 88% return for our investors, but it's growing its dividend by 23% a year over the last three. I'll show you how I'm investing in real estate stocks right now and reveal the single one that made it into our Bowtie Index. If you wanna see all the stocks in the index, go to Stock Card and the Idea Center, click on the indexes and you'll find the Bowtie Index. From there, you'll see the methodology we're using to pick stocks, the videos detailing it, some great ways to contribute your own ideas, and the stocks in the index right now. Don't forget to follow the index to get early access to videos and be the first to see when I add a stock to the group. If you do sign up for Stock Card, use the promo code Bowtie Nation, all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. The Bowtie Index is the top 10% of the large cap stock market, the best 1 in 10 stocks among the 500 largest companies in the United States. Now, I explained how I'm finding stocks for the index in our first couple of videos, a unique quantitative and qualitative process that not only finds the best of breed companies in each stock, but also in each sector. On back-tested results, the index has outperformed the largest 500 companies in the US by more than 50% over the last five years. So check out the videos I'll link in the description to see how we're doing this. Now, all you out there in the nation know, I would never recommend putting all your money in just one stock, even this one real estate stock that made it into the index. It's a solid choice, but I want to round out the list with two others and a fund that I think every investor should have give you that true diversification in real estate. And our first real estate stock is one I've highlighted on the channel several times for its strong growth potential, Gaming and Leisure Properties, ticker GLPI. The company owns 52 properties across 17 states, many without a competitor for more than 60 miles. Its casinos are operated by some of the biggest names in gaming, including Caesars, Boyd, and Penn National, and over 15,000 hotel rooms. Besides the growth in gambling that we're just starting to see across the US, I really like the company's strategy and business. It contracts with operators on a triple net basis, so the casinos pay all costs, including maintenance. And strong contract terms means GLPI has been able to keep 100% occupancy since inception. Now, of course, this property type got hit hard in the pandemic, but free cash flow is already on its way higher. The company generated $728 million in free cash flow over the last year, nearly double the $424 million in 2020, and more importantly, already above pre-pandemic levels. I feel like the pandemic just wiped out a lot of those weaker REITs and the casino players in the industry, leaving leaders like GLPI to take that market share and emerge stronger. The shares are already up 11% since I started talking about this company in March, and the average analyst target is only about 4% higher, but this one can go on a lot higher over the next five years. I really like the last two stocks I'll highlight next, but if you do invest in just one or two real estate stocks, you should also own a REIT ETF to spread out your risk across the asset class. For that, I want to highlight the Invesco Premium Yield REIT, ticker KBWY, and its 7.9% dividend yield. Now, this one hasn't done as well as the individual REITs in the list, but since it's a fund, it gives you that instant diversification across all these property types. For example, the KBWY invests across small and mid-sized REITs and includes some of my favorites like Omega Healthcare, Gladstone, and even GLPI. So not only do you get that strong 8% dividend yield, but some growth potential on those smaller REITs and the stability across many different property types. I highlighted shares of WP Carry, ticker WPC, as my favorite real estate stock earlier this year. And I still like it, though. I'll explain why another one made it in the Bowtie Index. WPC is a $17 billion REIT with great diversification across property type. And in fact, pretty evenly spread across industrial, warehouse, office, and retail space. Now, most of the portfolio is in the US, though it does hold just over 35% of the properties in Europe, which gives it that geographical diversification as well. And it is that diversification it is really why I like WPC for one of my favorite dividend REITs if you're just buying one stock in the space. Against the other real estate stocks I follow, only WP Carry has the exposure to those different property types that I believe can really bring down the risk in your portfolio. The company collects over $1.1 billion in annualized base rent and books 98% occupancy over 131 million square feet. That's across more than 1,100 properties, and, and WP Carry has topped expectations for funds from operations over the last four quarters, reporting an FFO of $5.33 over the last year. So this one is trading for only about 16 times on a price to FFO basis, which is a good value versus the 18 times FFO you see across REITs totally. And we'll get to that one real estate stock that made it into our index next, but all you out there in the nation know, I'm not about to just drop a list of stocks in your lap and say, here, go buy these. I wanna give you the four tips to invest in real estate stocks 
help you be a better investor and know how to invest. And the first thing you wanna do when looking at real estate stocks is what type of property does the REIT buy? So is it office space, warehouse, self-storage, retail or data centers, any of those sub-property sub types? This is important because most REITs specialize in just one property type. So you really need a good outlook on that one or to build a portfolio of REITs across different types. Next, you wanna look for where the REIT invests. Most of these are focused on the US property market, but even in that, it helps to find one with properties spread across a region or nationally at least. It's important because a REIT with properties in just a few states could get hit hard when the economy there struggles or if a natural disaster hits. Tenant diversification is another important factor here, and all these are gonna be available on the REIT's investor relations page. And type in Google the name of the company and investor relations to find it. And here you're gonna find a company presentation or other docs showing you the property types, the tenants, and other financials. The idea here with tenant diversification though is really important because you don't want any single customer to be more than about 10% of the REIT's business ju just in case that tenant bankrupts. Here we see the breakdown for realty income and you see even the most here, Walgreens is just 4% of total rent and the REIT is spread out across business type by state. Also in any investor presentation you'll find, you'll also find the occupancy rate for the properties as well as historical rate. Uh, the higher the better here of course, but more important is just the consistency in that occupancy. You don't want to see any big drops that could signal weakness in managing those properties from time to time. And, and it's great if it can be above the average occupancy, around 94% for large REITs. I also want to share one resource for following REIT stocks. If you search on Google for NAREIT property returns, or that's N-A-R-E-I-T, or returns by property, you'll see this performance by property sector and subsector from the National Association of REITs. You can download the data in Excel, or I just like looking at it on the online version, and it's a great resource, totally free, for following the returns to each property type. That is extremely important when you're looking at real estate stocks because the returns and the outlook on, on one property type can be far different from the other. So you really do need to think of this in terms of, not in terms of all REITs together, but, but by property types that you like and companies within each. For example, here you see in the report that all equity REITs are down an average of 12.2% so far this year, with regional malls down 30%, and even relatively safer healthcare down 4.6%. But you can see how this can help kind of guide your investment. Self-storage REITs surged 79% last year, and I warned investors earlier this year on valuations to avoid the space. And, here we see they're down double digits so far. I still do like healthcare on those long-term trends and even on a slight loss, it's helped protect your portfolio from the worst in stocks and some of these other property types. But now the only real estate stock to make it into our bow tie index, SBA Communications, ticker SBAC. The company is one of the largest cell tower owners in the world with over 33,000 towers throughout North and South America, as well as Tanzania and South Africa. SBAC owns the cell towers and then leases those back to the carriers like AT&T, Verizon, Dish Network, uh, three quarters of the revenue, just under 75% is from the US where mobile data usage is still growing by 30% plus a year. So there is also still much more room for international growth for this company. SBA has booked revenue growth of 7% annually over the last three years, more than twice the 3% peer average. And not only is it growing faster, but it's more profitable as well. The company's operating margin, that core measure of profitability that I love so much, has been over 36% over the past three years. Again, more than twice the 17% average among peers. And that's a lot of the reason why this is the only real estate stock to make it into our bow tie index. All you out there in the nation know I got my start in real estate and love the asset class long term. And because we're only investing in companies that pass these quantitative factors like the faster sales growth, stronger profitability, especially compared to peers, it really limits our index into the best of the best. SBA has built in rent escalators into its leases tied to inflation, so it's also a great hedge for higher prices. And this is one that's gonna follow that demand for mobile data all the way up. Besides the potential growth in the industry, along with SBAC's best of breed advantages, the company has increased its dividend yield from just 75 cents a share three years ago to $2.33 each in the last fiscal year. Now that's 23% increase last year and 45% annually over the last three. Beyond that dividend growth, analysts have an average target of $355 each for this stock, 23% upside over the next year. Click on the video to the right for the one energy stock I'm adding to the Bowtie Index, up 350% in the last two years, and I like it even higher. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.